Montclair Historic Preservation Commission. Notice has been given in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act by posting a copy of the notice on the first floor of the municipal building and by sending a copy to the Montclair Times, the Star Ledger, and the Herald News. And in today's day and age, um, we're going to be broadcast remotely on Channel 34 and also on the Facebook, cha uh, Facebook the uh, Township Facebook uh, page. So if you'd like to uh, go back and look at this meeting or listen to this meeting, you feel free to do that. So Mr. Petto, the roll call, please. Sure. Chair Bennett. Present. Vice Chair Hyman. Present. Mr. Rooney. Here. Mr. Greenbaum. Here. Ms. Kane Levy. Here. And Mr. Reimnitz. Here. Okay. It should be noted that Mr. Connolly. Oh, and Mr. Connolly. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Tom. Tom. Yes. Okay. okay. Now we hear you. <laughs> Sorry. And Mr. And Mr. Karasik. Yeah, I'm here. I'm just trying to figure out the video here. Um, okay. Anyway, and I'm Mr. listening. Okay. Pedo. And I'm here as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. First order of business is the approval of the minutes of February 27th, 2020. Should be noted that due to the coronavirus pandemic, we were not able to meet in March, hence our meeting today remotely. Um, does anyone have any comments or changes to the uh, minutes of February 27th? I have none. No comment. Anyone else, Ms. Levy, Mr. Greenbaum? Nope. I wasn't at the meeting, so. Oh, okay. So, so we have one abstention. And well, so we'll, we have to do a, we'll do a roll I'm call. So. Abstention as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so roll call, Mr. Petto. Well, do we, we first need a motion to approve. Oh, motion. A motion. Who would like to? Approve? Mr. Uh, Hyman with a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Rooney with a second, and then we'll call the roll. Chair Bennett. Yes. Mr. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Rooney? Yes. Mr. Greenbaum? Yes. And Ms. Kane Levy abstains uh, as she was absent. Mr. Reimnitz also abstains as he was not present. Okay. Um, public comment? Nobody has called in, Graham, have they? I don't see any other outside users. Okay, then we'll move on to committee reports. Um, the first one is the Design Review and Redevelopment Committee, um, would be Mr. Greenbaum. Did you meet at all during the two months that we've been off? We have not. Okay. Um, education and Outreach, that's Steve Rooney and myself. Um, we have not done anything to date. We would like to set up a, um, a meeting, a, a remote meeting to discuss um, some future projects. So. By next month, we should have something going on. Um, landmark nominations. Graham, would you give us an update on where we are with the uh, grant that we've received for the- Sure. Um, so we, um, oops, just gonna mute you, uh, Kathleen. It's, you're still getting a little bit of feedback, but I just muted for this portion. So um, just to advise the township uh, did post the request for proposals for completion of the estate section um, survey. Uh, which under which we we were awarded a, a certified local government grant made during the 2019 funding round to do a survey of that area of the township. Um, we issued the RFP earlier this year and received uh, one response to the RFP, a, a qualifying response. Um, and the township council um, on Tuesday of this week approved the resolution appointing uh, E2 project management uh, as the selected uh, historical consultant to complete the um, historical survey. Um, we'll be working through the contracting process in the next few weeks um, to get them on board and ready to begin the survey work. Um, under the current format, I don't know, um, and you know, the public health restrictions that are currently in place, I don't know exactly when they will begin their field survey field work, um, but that's something that once we notify them and start to work with them, um, we'll ascertain some more information on that. Um, the chair has discussed um, a little bit more outreach to the state's uh, neighbors, and so we'll, we'll work on a plan on that in the interim going forward over the next few weeks, um, you know, before they begin their field work. 
so we can educate folks and let them know what's going to be happening. Okay. Thank you, Graham. And what about our next uh, our next grant? Did did the paperwork go in for that for the revision of the design guidelines? Yes, we submitted that application. Um, we have not yet heard back uh, from the state. Um, I'm anticipating a little bit longer timeline on that response period, given uh, the current situation that we have going on. Um, but you know, everything was in and complete. We did get notification that the grant application was received. It's complete. So. Committee. What committee was that? The Minor Applications Committee. We have not met, uh, you know, given the, the thing, the, everything in place, we have not met. I did get one app. We've received one application this week, though. Um, so we'll be bringing that forward um, in some format uh, in the next couple of weeks uh, to the Minor Application Committee. Great. And then the Revisions Committee. Um, I know that there's one that's in the works now, correct? That uh, John and you. Yeah, I I met uh, online with Graham and the applicant from 195, 195 Christopher, and we reviewed his latest drawings and then, um, compared that to the requirements uh, that uh, he was supposed to achieve. And we sent him back to make a couple of corrections and mm -hmm. do a few things that I think were improvements to the front facade. And he came back uh, and uh, finished that. Mm -hmm. I approved that. Oh, great. Okay. Thank you, John. Um, next is old business. Uh, being that there is no old business, we will move to the new business of tonight. So um, we are discussing application 2020-10 from 467 to 469 Bloomfield Avenue. Um, it is an application put forward by the 467 Bloomfield Avenue LLC. And this is a certificate of appropriateness. Uh, it is a replacement of windows at a building in the town center historic district. The existing building has three stories. It is a late 19th century commercial building with an art modern facade. As I said before, it's located within the town center historic district. The existing art modern facade uh, is of its own time and is a replacement of an earlier facade, a replacement of a 19th century facade. The building as we know it is known as the Hampton House. The proposed work includes the removal and replacement of the existing steel frame awning windows at the second and third floors of the building with new aluminum windows finished to match the existing color. Um, the existing window openings currently are painted steel frame, two wide, four light awning type, single paint units circa 1947. The proposed work includes the removal of the existing steel frame window and awning panels completely. Uh, new thermally broken aluminum frame, two wide, four light fixed units will be fixed in the New aluminum window frames will be factory finished to match the existing color of the existing window frames. And if this looks familiar, we did see this uh, last year, but it was for a different um, uh, issue on the uh, on this on the uh, building. So, Graham, could you just fill us in a little bit on what we had seen this for? Sure, yeah, and I'm sure Mr. Debode will uh, yeah, expand upon um, some of my initial commentary. But just to refresh the, the commission's memory, um, I believe it was last year the commission reviewed this um, a, a project for this application on referral from the planning board um, for improvements that involved site plan approval from the planning board. Um, which included the installation of an accessible ramp on the side of the building um, and some other configurations and in addition uh, that required review as well. Um, that project was referred to the HPC given the project, the building situation within the historic district. Um, the applicant has returned and notified that they um, now uh, need to do some window replacement given the existing condition, which the applicant will further address. Um, and upon review, we determined that that work, um, because it's separate from the site plan improvements, would uh, require a certificate of appropriateness. So that's what's being sought here under this uh, application. Okay, so um, it's Mr. Debode, uh, Gary Debode, that is the lead on this. So. Great. Thank well, you. Uh, Mr. Debode, could you just, I guess we still have to uh, 
swear you in, correct? Do we have to do that? Yeah, I believe so. Ira, are you there? Here, can you hear me? We can hear you. And I'm here. Okay, okay. can you swear in, Mr. Yeah. Debode? All right, Mr. Debode, would you raise your right hand, please? You solemnly swear that testimony you're going to give this commission is truth, all truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Okay. Could you state your name, please, and your relationship to the applicant? Yes, my name is Gary Scott Debode. Um, I am one of the, I represent the ownership for the property. Um, there are two different owners, um, 467 Bloomfield Avenue and um, Gallium Real Estate Venture um, Montclair Bloomfield LLC. Um, okay, two that's owners. enough. Thank you. And Mr. Debode, would you be taking us through the PowerPoint that you've uh, kindly submitted? Actually, what I'd like to do is have our architect who's on, on the call uh, do that for us. But, um, that's okay. That would be great. Um, Let me swear your architect in too. Uh, yes. I just, I, I don't see him, but he can raise his right hand. <laughs> uh, please, uh, you solemnly swear the testimony you're going to give this commission, truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Okay, and could you state your name, please? Yes, Jared McCormick. Uh, could you say that again, because I just couldn't hear. Jared McCormick. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. McCormick. Um, is there anyone else that should be sworn in for this application? Uh, we, we, have, we have two other participants on the call. Uh, one is Mr. Jack Wan, who represents the manufacturer of the proposed window replacement, diamond windows and doors, and also uh, Mr. Uh, Bill Brennan, who is our construction manager. Are you going to need them to testify? Um, I, I don't know that they have to testify. I think Jared McCormick can handle the testimony, but there may be questions for one or both of them. All right, well, Iris. Uh, do you want do you want to just swear them now? Make it easy. Yeah. Yes. Why don't we? Oh yeah. Why don't uh, wherever they are raise their right hand, please, both of you. Solemnly swear the testimony you're going to give the commission. <laughs> but the truth. Yes. <clears throat> yes. And the person who said yes, uh, first one, uh, who's that? That's Jack Juan, Diamond Windows and Doors. Great. The second. Hello? Oh, someone so else? Bill. Is Bill there? He's here. We don't have any audio from Bill, though. Oh, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Let's continue. That's going to be hard for him to answer questions. <laughs> 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 okay, Mr. Mr. McCormick, will you um, kindly sh uh, take us through the uh, PowerPoint that you've submitted? Um, sure. Sure. Well, person, can I just uh, make one quick statement first, if that's okay? Sure. Okay, great. Well, thank you. First, I want to thank you all for making the time for us. We really appreciate you seeing us a second time, especially. Um, I apologize for that. I think what, what happened for us, you know, in the approval last year, once we got into our engineering, uh, we realized the opportunity for you know much better efficiency in the windows because as as um, Ram mentioned, they're single pane. So um, that's when we realized we really need to replace the windows and you know examine the condition. So so that's um, you know we want to obviously to have the building look the way it does. And um, Mr. McCormick uh, connected us to Diamond Windows, who has done a number of historical replacements, which is why they're. The ones that we're proposing to use. So, um, anyways, I, I just wanted to thank you, and I'll now pass it off to to Jared to, to do the presentation. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, we'll start with Graham. Are you going to uh, just scroll through the slides? Is that yes? I will advance the slides as you just notified. Okay. Okay. If we want to kind of skip, um, probably. To the third slide. We've already gone through the project background. We don't don't need to revisit that. We'll start here with uh, an, an overview of existing conditions. Uh, existing windows located in, within a horizontal band on the metal panels on the Bloomfield and Northfield facades. Picture shown is of the uh, Bloomfield facade, and there are currently eight window openings, four at each uh, up of the uh, upper floors. Go to the next. Here we see the uh, North Fullerton uh, facade. This has a total of 12 windows, uh, six at each of the upper floors. Five are double units, 
and one at each floor is a single unit. The single units are towards the, um, that would be the north end of the building. Uh, let's see, we can go to the next, next slide. A more detailed look at the existing uh, window makeup. Um, and these can be found on the uh, architectural plans on sheet AE3. Uh, they are steel frame, single pane, two wide, four high uh, light pattern. The top, top light panel is a fixed, uh, fixed panel. The two middle panels are one panel that is an, an awning with a top hinge. The lower light is a hopper, uh, which is a um, bottom hinge tilt in. And, and most, actually all of the windows are currently uh, inoperable due to either rust, corrosion, uh, hardware failure, or just a buildup of uh, exterior paint. Go to the next slide. So these are the two elevations, uh, which can be found on sheets uh, AE1 and AE2 of the submission, showing the uh, facades of each, each side of the building. Go to the next slide. And here we are at the uh, proposed replacement. These are the general uh, elevations, which can be found on sheets A1 and A2. Go to the next slide. And here is a side by side comparison, also found in A3. On the left, you'll see the existing windows with the operation indicated the size, size of uh, vertical and horizontal mountains and mullions. Um, and to the right, the new window, this is the aluminum uh, firmly broken window unit with a very similar uh, layout and rhythm. Go to the next slide. So this is a, a more detailed look at the uh, size and dimensions of the proposed window, uh, also found on sheet A3 in the, in the submission. Uh, new windows are thermally broken, aluminum frames, one inch insulated glass, uh, following the same two wide, four high light pattern. All, all window panels in, in these units are, are proposed to be fixed. Uh, the muttons are provided with simulated divided glass with a spacer between, between the glass. And we are replicating the, the exact, not the exact, but as close as we can, uh, size of, of muttons and mullions of the existing. Go to the next. And this slide is showing our proposed finish of the, uh, the new windows, our, our chip um, from the manufacturer on the left, and that, that color represented on the actual new proposed window unit on the right. Slide. So in summary, uh, we feel the window replacement proposed in the submission provides the appropriate treatment uh, of this contributing structure, proposed window unit, uh, design replicates the original aesthetic patterns, and provides an important improvement to the building. Uh, these improvements enhance uh, energy performance, continue the historic appearance, and enhance the viability of the structure into the future. So uh, we thank you for your time. And uh, I guess we'll open for questions and discussion. Okay, thank you, Mr. McCormick. Now uh, we'll open it up to the uh, commission members that uh, to ask questions. And remember that this is just questions of the applicant. Yeah, um, I think, um, Chair, just if we do this by member, um, so we go through member by member so they can announce themselves and then start their line of questionings if they have any question. Um, that'll make for a more orderly uh, round of questioning. Um, okay. So I don't know if you want to start with one. Yes. Okay. Yes, Mr. Hyman. Uh, no comment. Okay. Questions. No questions. Okay. Uh, Ms. Kane Levy. Yes, I have a couple yeah. of questions. Um, I see that you've chosen to make the windows fixed, not operable at all. And so, how does that function? Why do you think your tenants would prefer to have no option of opening a window? Well, uh, we, we're proposing that this would be uh, office, uh, office tenants. 
Uh, and typically, office tenants uh, don't have a don't have operable windows due to you know, HVAC and other other systems within their within their space. Okay. Well, I'm a little concerned that I you you haven't provided um, a section through each of the members of the window so that we could look at the details. I see that um, the dimensions are quite similar to the existing, but the prof we don't have information about the profiles. So particularly, oh. particularly the central vertical mullion, which has, you know, it, it would be unfortunate just to have that as a, a flat profile. And also the muntins, you know, do, there's any putty line or how, how so, are you going to be treating that? The, 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 um, the submission that, that accompanied our application, um, there are, I believe it's sheet A3 in our, in our drawing submission. It's not in this PowerPoint, but if, oh. if Graham can pull up, uh, I believe it's the last sheet. There are sections in details of the existing windows on the left side and then on, on the right side of the new. Would you like to start at the top and work through them, through them, or? Yeah, why don't why don't we go to to the left, uh, where we can show the existing uh, windows? There, that 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 should. So here's here's a section cutting through the top overhead of the uh, the existing window, and the the frame profile exposed to the to the exterior varies anywhere from. An inch to three quarters to half, depending on how the opening was actually finished. Uh, and these these frame profiles are only an inch and a quarter to inch and a half uh, deep. Um, and if we can scroll down just a little bit below that, you'll see the same the same detail uh, exists at the jam, the vertical at the at the opening. Uh, the, the frame is is kind of tucked in and finished around, uh, embedded into the to the masonry opening. Uh, we go down just a little further on that. You'll see a sill detail. Now the sill shows a uh, a little more of a, a frame, a full frame actually, because of the way that, that they detailed the, the precast panels. Um, so you'll see that the frame varies from an inch and a half to an inch to three quarters of an inch at, at, around the perimeter. Mm -hmm. um, the, mun the the vertical mullion uh, in the middle. Uh, if you go down a little further, Graham an elevation that is that is about a three inch wide vertical million between the, between the actual two window units um, and that and that currently is a those are flat uh, angles are they because I look at the photograph they didn't look flat yeah well you're seeing um, you're seeing the frame and then you're seeing another um, section behind that which would be the actual sash or the panel of the window that operates Actually, it should. I'm saying it's in front of the frame. Um, was there a photo of that in your presentation that yeah, I should flip yeah. in the pre in the presentation? Let's see. That's going to be slide. Uh, it's one yeah. of these. It's probably the fifth. This one. Maybe. Yes. There you go. Yeah. So if you can, if you look, you can almost see uh, on the vertical mullion. There's actually some. Those vertical lines you see in the varying depths, that's yes. just over overlapping um, the steel angles. You have the main the main angle that runs in the middle that becomes the, the mullion. You can see I think there's one, two, three, four. Right. So is that something that you can replicate? Well, um, I, I'm gonna have to defer to uh, to Jack. Uh, go on with with diamond windows. Maybe he can speak to um, the profile. Um, I mean, it depends on how they're removing the old section of the window. I mean, we can keep the existing uh, as is, and our frame going into the existing vertical post. It won't defect deflect from the sight lines at all. It will remain the same because of the. The width of our frames only inch and inch and a quarter, inch and five eighths. So we can keep the existing, or we can we do have a mullion that will match that. Okay. Well, um, I I would like to see those details at some point if we if we do approve this. 
Okay. Oh, and then I have another question. Um, you, I know you, your company has experience in historic window replacement. Mm -hmm. it, have you done any projects in Montclair? I, I have not. I've done one in uh, Bloomfield, New Jersey, mm -hmm. uh, the, right off the Garden State Parkway. Uh, that's if you drive it. It's a uh, old uh, five-story building that you can see with black windows right off the Garden State Parkway. It's, it'll be on your left hand side if you're going south, mm -hmm. on your right hand side if you're going north. Uh, we just finished two buildings in um, Midtown Manhattan, uh, East 44th Street, uh, 22 floors of each building, and we, we completed replacing the exact same steel window. Is that in Tudor City or? No, that's in Midtown Manhattan. Okay, but not in the Tudor City complex. No, I, I mean the one we we've done the one in uh, in Bloomfield, New Jersey. I don't know. In, in relative where that is compared to where you guys are <laughs> manhattan and the east 44th street is tudor city yeah yes yes east 310 it's, it's it's about two two minutes from the united nations no uh, just up the street from the united nations okay um is that a new york city landmark the one that yes yeah, we, we went we went through landmark commission Okay. Uh, meetings and, and got approved as well yes and that's like a 19 Beaux -Arts, called the beaux-arts apartments beaux-arts Ap apartments yes okay. okay i i worked on that project so i'm familiar with it <laughs> okay all right uh, those are my questions thank you okay thanks uh Reimnitz, do you have questions um yeah i have a few questions um, staying with this uh, image on the screen, um, you show some dimensions on your existing elevation drawing that says that the center mullion is three inches wide. What are you measuring to here? Because uh, are you measuring just, yeah, that's the question, because I don't read this as three inches wide. We're measuring to uh, each each side of the the vertical um, the vertical million, not the actual sash unit. I'm sorry. If you look if you look at the picture, you can see on either side of those four uh, fasteners, there are two two small narrow strips. Yes. We're measuring to the outside from the outside face of one to the outside face of the other. Okay. Okay. Um, you have dimensions of uh, <clears throat> these muttons and the glass between and so on, and that's less important in my mind that uh, the center of these things line up with the center of the panels, metal panels on either side. Is the dimensioning that you're showing us uh, are these muttons in the windows centered on those uh, uh, horizontal lines of the panels? Yes, yeah. you, you can see that on um, the drawings uh, A1 and A2, you go to the actual draw elevation drawing. Yeah, but you could be off, okay. Um, on your sill, proposed sill condition, um, I see, uh, a new aluminum sill pan flashing detail below the window. Is that gonna be uh, in the same color as, yes. A little, it says new aluminum sill pan flashing. Is yes, that the that same? Would be, that, would, that would be the same color as the, the window frame. Okay. Um, the existing uh, windows are all square angles um, and, um, flat steel, et cetera. And I see, I see the profile of these windows with a little concave molding um, uh, of the aluminum frame. Um, is there a, a window, is there a detail in the window vocabulary that's a square frame? Or why did why did you put that concave? It doesn't really match what's there now. See what you're saying. 
So, John, you're referring to this area here. Yes. It would be a, a, a if funny. You, if you uh, zoom idea. in on what on the aluminum frame at the bottom, you know, at the mm -hmm. sill of the window, <clears throat> you're going to see the section through that. Fr yeah, exactly. Let me bring that back up so everybody can see. Yeah. It creates a lot of different lines. That you, so that's just a question. Question is my question. Again, I'll, I'll defer to, to, to Jack Diamond on, on this as far as the, the uh, frame profile available. Um, these, these lines are, are very close to what the existing lines are. It's the only, the only difference I would say is the actual uh, concave or, or putty bead that is, that is showing. Instead of a, instead of a square step, it's a, it's a concave uh, rounded uh, indentation. Uh, if I have another question, uh, if you go up and look at the the mutton, just go, uh, Graham, if you can scan up that proposed section details, there is a mutton detail. Yeah, right there. Aluminum mutton mullion. Um, this looks like an applied mullion. Yeah, and um, I just quickly speak to it. that's that's an error that is supposed to be a, a simulated divided light with a spacer there there was there is supposed to be a spacer with a with a another um another grill on the on the interior face of the piece. so there is a, another button on the interior and the spacer between the glass yes uh, layers okay um let's see if i have any other questions mm -hmm. So the way I read these windows is essentially they're big pieces. They're, it's a single window, a single piece of glass, single piece of, of uh, inch uh, double pane insulated glass with uh, simulated divided muttons. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. That's, those are my questions. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just, um, did you call me? I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Okay. You have a quest question. I just wanted to understand, and again, it's it's not as clear as I'd like it to be. Um, just to, for verbal verification, the window, uh, as I see it here, is, is recessed. The glass face is recessed from the face of the building um, in, in the... Um, and the penetration there, um, it's the same as what exists presently. It's the same as what exists, meaning presently. it's not flush in any way. It's the to, same as the face of the building. It's still recessed. The window glass sinks in from the uh, facade. Is that correct? The, the glass sits in from the frame, and, and the frame itself sits in from the facade panels, yes. So I just want to make sure that the that, that there is that that reveal that the window is recessed um, uh, to the same you know at least to the same depth as the uh, existing condition. Is that would that be a, a safe bet? That, that is correct. We're we, we're we're trying to um, avoid disturbance of the existing precast uh, panel, which exists on the head and the sill condition. The okay. jam condition at either side is a uh, painted metal panel. And the, the, the idea and in installation of this is we would cut or remove the existing frames and then replace in the same same vertical plane as the original. Okay. So, um, again, just to confirm, so the face of the glass would be roughly in the same equivalent plane as the existing condition of glass. Yes, both, yes, both glass and frame of, of the new would, would, would be very similar, or if not match exact, the face of the existing frame and existing glass. And so uh, my next question is the vertical um, uh, 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 structure between the, 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 the four lights. Um, I just want to make sure that these, first of all, the depth of the muttons that um, my colleague John Reimnitz asked you to identify, um, those project out 
How far from the face of the glass? Can you hear a, a legitimate, uh, you know, depth to those? Yes, th those project, uh, I believe it's, I believe it's three quarters of an inch, or a little less than three quarters of an inch. Yeah, it's five eight. It's five eights. Five eights. Five eights. Five eights. Three quarters. So, of an okay. Inch. And then the, my next question is: Does the center bar uh, project uh, uh, beyond the depth of the mullions? Because the original design, the glass uh, 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 frame is actually a mechanical frame, so that the the uh, uh, the mullion, which is now simulated in the new in the proposed one. Um, I, I want to make sure that it reads, uh, there, there's some dimension between the vertical and the mullions. You have, in your, in your, uh, in your uh, elevation that I'm looking at here, you don't see the vertical piece, but does the vertical piece project out beyond the depth of the mullions? No. Does not. Oh, well, I mean, maybe maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe the thickness of the actual frame material, because of the the overlapping uh, steel components. I think it's very important that that um, that the reveal that the the center uh, um, frame and the mullions, you know, uh, meet up in a way that is, uh, you know, it looks uh, uh, as close as possible to what's presently there so that the mullions don't look fake. Uh, that, you know, that right. it, looks, it looks, you know, like a viable window structure. Um, yeah, and if, if you look at, if you look at the, the head detail that actually has, that Graham has up, that you see the face of the frame towards the top, and that is the same plane um, as, okay. as the Munton or mullion. Now, when you go to the vertical mullion that's between, um, the, the two panels. That, that is essentially uh, essentially another piece of frame that you would see that is an inch and inch and a half. Um, and to go back to, I believe the comment before about this is to say that this is one one window unit, mm -hmm. that, you know, one window frame with um, applied grills and spacers. It's actually two two window units. Can you show us, go back to, yeah, thank you. Should, can you help us clarify that? So the left and right, those, the, the two sets, the, the four up, um, that's one single window, double pane. Yes. Yep. And, and, and so the question is, you were discussing previously the possibility of retaining the existing vertical and putting two separate window panels in there, or, the alternative would be to what do a single a giant even though it'd be two sets of windows it would be it would be one um it would be one um pre uh, uh manufactured window is that it yes it would, uh, it would like to, oh, i'm sorry Jack, go no no yeah i mean we still would make it to to replicate what's existing we would make it as two separate units and then we would have a mullion that would replicate what's existing if they if they choose not to keep the existing vertical okay yeah right. i mean and go ahead i'm sorry no 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 I, I just want to make sure that you know as it is right now you're you're proposing in two possible ways one is to retain the existing vertical and put two windows one on the other side uh, affixed to the existing as opposed to alternatively having an entire new structure uh, uh you know the entire outer frame uh it seems to me that it would be difficult to use the existing center piece uh because it seems to be that's integrated with the overall frame uh i mean we we were able to reuse some of the existing uh in the uh, manhattan project i spoke earlier about uh some of the screws you were able we were able to to turn the screws and remove uh the existing window frames and and be able to bolt it back and repaint it. Okay, I, I just think the overall the overall issue here is just that there that you know you're going from something that actually has a uh, an integrity. It's it represents something that is integral to the actual me mechanization of the window, and now you're doing something that's simulated, 
And I just want to make sure that it's thought through so it comes across as having some integrity to it as opposed to something that looks like a, a, a you know, a, a bad synthetic example. Oh, no, no. I mean, we, we have a lot of uh, a lot of experience in doing this. Uh, the reason I we're I'm suggesting, you know, keeping that is I don't know if that vertical is actually a structural member or not. Uh, if it's not a structural member, I would remove the entire window and you, I, I have a mullion that can replicate the three inches that's there and for minus the, the, the bolts that's, that you see, the, three, the, school, the screws, basically. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if it's structural because we haven't removed one and, and, and done can, a mock-up I, yet, so. I can verify. I mean, it's not, it may be integral to the window function, but it's not structural to any part of the building. Okay. Yeah. Then I, I, I would propose just making... Uh, two new windows with our custom mullion to to match the existing. Okay, I, I think ultimately um, I would, when we we have discussion afterwards, I'll, I'll be is proposing that we review that prior to final approval. Uh, you know, as a, either a subcommittee or our entire commission is to review the uh, that that uh, the vertical and how they integrate with the uh, the horizontal mullions. Okay. So those are my questions, uh, but if, again, I just want to clarify the depth. You see, there. Is, I just want to be sure that depth that we've talked about. You've confirmed that the window will sit <laughs> on the same plane as it presently is. It'll you'll have that reveal over the window and below. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rooney. Do you have any questions, Steve? Yes, I have. Um... My my question is is the color. I mean, the mm -hmm. color they've proposed seems to be fine, but will the existing panels throughout the building be also changed to that color? Will they? Will everything match? Uh, the, the the intent is to to try to match the new to the existing uh, wall panels. Yeah. If if you can't match the existing wall panels, will you paint the existing wall panels? I would have to defer to to, to Gary on on that. Um, I, I I we certainly can do that if that's the best answer. I think we would try to match it, uh, the new to the old. Um, it's it's a metal panel. Is that correct, Jared? Uh, yes. Is, right. So it, so <clears throat> it could be painted. Right. That that was my concern. Is that the, they're supposed. To, it looks like that they do match. I'm not too sure that they actually do match, but they should be as compatible as possible. Also, the center mullion, um, I don't think is three inches. It looks wider to me, but I think that it should uh, match that size. Not, not including the operable parts, but like the fixed part, the center mullion should be the same. Is that okay? Thank you. Uh, my question: Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So, just my question, just to uh, understand this, you're proposing to keep the sender mullion. Um, if you, but you, you may have to replace it when you when you real when you take out the entire window. Correct. Our shows replacing the mullion um, is was the original proposal. But if we need to keep it, I, it sounds like diamond windows are comfortable. We could do that. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, that's great. Uh, that that was my question, um, and I know that you received Mr. Conley's uh, comments on the project, and I know I reviewed this with him earlier. That, um, but maybe Mr. Conley can go over the four points that he. There you go. Okay, thank you. Oh, hang on, Tom. I just need to unmute you. Go ahead, Tom. Now you're unmuted. All right. Thank you. Um, okay. Yeah. So the original set of drawings are reviewed. Um, there was a second set provided um, maybe two days ago. Um, 
So in my initial review, I, I asked under my comment number one was for the applicant to provide cut sheets and a sample of uh, profiles and a color for us to review in the field to make sure that the color and the profiles match um, the existing windows. Um, comment two, um, it was unclear on the originally submitted drawings uh, if the windows were operable uh, or were fixed, and if the proposed one were to be fixed or operable. Um, that was not indicated on the original set of drawings, which has since been clarified in the recently submitted drawings. Um, under comment three, the original set of drawings did not have a simulated divided light um, grill between the panes, the double pane of glass, um, which I believe is a requirement in the, um, the, the guidelines for the uh, uh, for Montclair. Um, and they're still currently not shown on the revised set of drawings, but that was already discussed. Um, sounds like they will be provided. Uh, <laughs> And in the original submitted drawings, the uh, mutton, the muttons and mullions of the existing windows didn't have the same relationship um, and rhythm to the um, to the existing. So the proposed windows did not look like the originals, and I still believe they do not. Um, and that's been discussed. Um, I guess some some uh, commissioners have uh, picked up on the fact that the windows that are operable um, have a different uh, thickness to the they actually have a frame in the in the movable parts of the window so the top sections look completely different from the, the bottom three uh, operable in the existing um, so the drawing that's shown on um, sheet a3 that shows the existing window is not accurate um, and I, those were my initial four comments but um, I have a couple of comments after listening to the testimony tonight um, i was wondering if the um, applicant actually looked at modifying the existing windows because it's my understanding that um, a window that it's frame that's over an inch that could be modified to include a second pane of glass um, that's been done in the past um, i'm sure you're aware or as the applicant looked at providing steel uh, frame windows, which are also available, which may get us closer to the original window profile. So, my comments. Uh, well, we did we did look at trying to alter the existing windows, and and we're told that it would be impossible uh, to get a double pane glass in there for the for the um, additional you know energy efficiency um, we looked also at potentially putting a, a storm window on the inside um, which we didn't think was really a great solution for the building um, so those were the two things that we considered other than than going with this proposal well now knowing that your window is proposed to be fixed um, a storm window might actually work uh, I think it's certainly a possibility I, I think it's um, it's not really in keeping with the look of a window because then it's just a you know a storm window on the inside but um, we didn't think that that was the best answer so that's why we proposed this yeah I think under the second <laughs> to your standards um, if uh, that would be the first uh, recommendation would be to install an interior storm window instead of removing the windows um, and replacing them with something that is a close match. But now knowing that the windows are not going to be operate, uh, operable, um, I think we should look into I, I think from, um, from my experience in old windows that have had a storm window put in, it very difficult to actually seal them up and have them um, function well so you can end up getting moisture sometimes in between the the windows and the storm window or or you know dirt and it's um i don't see it as a very good solution it's obviously it could be done
Yeah, so my, my biggest concern is, I guess, the, the existing window elevation that's shown on sheet A3 is not drawn accurately. It doesn't, it doesn't, that photograph that we've been looking at. It, um, sir, is that be, because the, the sashes, the operable sashes in the existing windows aren't? Uh, right, we're missing, the, we're missing the frame on those operable windows shown in this drawing. I mean, it does have a dimension, right? So everybody's been picking up on the fact that the, the center mullion is three inches and it's actually probably more like five on those three windows that are operable. Okay. Well, the vertical mullion is three inches. The actual sash of the panel um, is, is an inch, which, is, which, is like an photograph, which, isn't, which isn't the frame and isn't the mullion, and it's the actual sash of the, the operable. Right, we're, we're missing. We're missing one. We're missing two lines in each of those panes. Yeah, you're missing. So in the two, in the two panel, the two light um, panel that's that's the awning. You're missing. You're missing a line that's offset by an inch in that in that elevation. Same same with same with the hopper at the bottom. Right. The actual panel at the top is 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 correct. Um, that's right. That's correct. And the actual the actual mullion is a if you look these these are one inch by one inch uh, angles that, that make up this uh, window frame. So when you have a one inch bolt that's in the middle, you see the four there, and then you have a one inch by one inch angle that creates an adjoining frame and an adjoining frame. You get three inches. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Well, I think the issue is that where the operable sashes are, that it, it's wider because of the sash. Yes, yeah, and, that's, and, and that's just it. That it's just it's where the where the operable panels are. There needs to be another line that's offset inside of that that right. represent the additional thickness of the actual op, operable sash frame, so, not so, the actual window frame. So is that is that uh, I guess Jack is that something that could be done so that if if that would meet the board's expectations if can the piece be added to make it wider where the the currently operable panels are yes uh, we would have to <clears throat> uh, put operable sashes into the existing to make give it that same thickness uh, around where the sashes are currently or why not just make the windows operable yes i agree well no i, I no i am making an operable sash but you know the 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 Tenant can choose to open it or not open it. We've done where we fixed it in place where the tenant doesn't want to open it at all. They don't want hardware, period. But if we made them operable, right, it would it would get closer to the look of the No, it, it would be exactly that those sight lines. That's correct. Right. And I think that's yeah. what we're looking for. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Jack, can you um can you clarify? Remember we spoke about the hopper windows aren't made anymore, I believe. Uh, um so yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. A lot of the companies, or uh, well, ninety percent of the companies, there's still one company out there that makes a, uh, a steel hopper, but it is very difficult to keep it air and water tight for the window opening in, especially with the thin sight lines of the old steel windows. You know, that's why we we only make <clears throat> the windows are that are more awning types, but it still keeps the same sight line and integrity of the window. But if we want, we can replicate this look with the with the sashes, um, whether they're fixed or operable. They could. Yes, that's look. correct. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Kathleen. Yes. When uh, could you just define awning? Does that mean that it swings out from the top? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, that's correct. correct. And the hopper means it swings out from the bottom. It swings in from the bottom. In from the bottom. Is it possible to have the hopper fixed and the awning operable? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Conley, uh, uh, any other comments? No more for me. Okay. Thank you. Um, so we'll go now to discussion. Um, Mr. Hyman, um, do you have any comments to make? No comments. 
who are next? Miss Levy, Kane Levy. Um, yeah, I, I'm intrigued by the idea of looking into restoring the existing windows and putting a, a storm if they're going to be fixed. Um, I don't know if you'd be willing to do that as a sample and see how it works out or, you know, and then if we do decide to approve replacement windows, I, I do think there's at least one section should be operable. Mm. And it would be more authentic than just a fixed window. And, oh, and the point that, um, my colleague, Mr. Rooney made about painting the enamel panels. I think that's a very bad idea and just the windows to match the existing as opposed to painting the rest of the building to match the windows. Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Reimitz. Um, I think uh, anything that could be done to make this look like uh, two separate windows on either side divided by a center mullion uh, would be an improvement. Um, I think the color issue, I'm looking, you know, I can't tell from the photograph, but it isn't an exact match right now anyway, because I think the steel is painted and the mm. metal panels of, I don't know, who knows about weathering one way or the other, but there's not an exact match. So I'm less concerned about that. I think maybe in the field, we could look at the actual color. Um, and I think if you look at the photograph below this one, Graham, mm -hmm. the, the facade of the building, I have right one. Here. On that. This one. No, the photograph on the same page, I think. Oh, not here. It's in the, uh, I'm sorry. What's in the plans? It's in the plans. Which sheet of the plans? Uh, it's in, I'll give you the sheet number here. Hold on. A, A, E, three. So in one of the, the there you go. Uh, that, that's good enough. I would suggest that the, you know, at the end of the day, the vertical, uh, reads heavier than all the other muttons. So. Oh, or even, you know, you can compare the upper photograph to the whole facade, but it just seems like what's proposed is uh, lightweight in that regard. Those are my comments. Mr. Green, Mr. Greenbaum? Um, I, I, let me make sure. Okay. Um, I think I think if there is going to be a replacement of the existing windows prior to final approval, we would have to see a sample of the extrusion, the actual metal extrusion that would be being used and maybe go on site. And just if, if the direction is to go to an entirely a, a full replacement, I think we would need to see samples. Um, and I do believe there are steel window manufacturers that uh, specialize in restoration type projects like this that actually create a uh, double pane insulated glass with the steel frame as opposed to the aluminum. Um, and I'd like to maybe have that explored. Hey, thank you, Mr. Rooney. Mr. Rooney, Steve. Yeah, yeah, the um, I agree with most with uh, my commissioners, and that like the vertical mullion must be heavier. Um, whether or not you know, my concern was the color of the panels. They don't have to match the color of the windows exactly because I did. Uh, Mr. Remnants said they probably don't. Um, it just you want to keep up with the same rhythm what's going on. Um, I think that there should be an operable 
section of the windows? You never know. In 50 years, maybe we won't be using air conditioning the same way. So um, that's my generally approve of the project. Okay, thank you. Um, and I would like to add my uh, comments that I think the uh, the best case scenario would be to try to restore the existing windows that are there now with the idea of possibly putting in a storm window in the um, interior well. And if that turns out not to be uh, feasible, then the replacement windows should at least have one section operable, uh, the awning section, uh, because I agree, I think most of the, my colleagues agree that um, you do need some uh, way to open up windows. Uh, and, and as Mr. Rooney said, who knows what's gonna happen in the future with air conditioning. Mm -hmm. So um, I know that uh, we, our committee, would, it would be the, uh, the revisions committee, right, Graham, that meets in the field? Yes, that's correct. Yes, so anything that we approve tonight would be subject to um, uh, uh, a meeting in the field with the revisions committee, which would be, uh, as I understand the color, uh, the profile of, and also the profile of the mullion, which I think is very important. Are there any other additional comments from discussion from uh, any of the fellow commissioners? The only thing I say is that the enameled panels have the the raised the three raised um, horizontal bars and those seem to be um, uh, either a silver tone or a nickel tone relative to the the kind of burgundy color and I just want to make it clear on the record that that should be retained the contrast should be retained on the horizontals uh, projected uh, uh, you know projected kind of um, bands i think that okay is, so i just want to make we, we didn't discuss that but i think it's important that they retain their their contrast so noted but i don't think in this application uh the applicant is proposing anything to the panels correct mr Debody? No. no i can speak to that uh, no, this is jared mccormick uh no we're not proposing to alter the uh the soft components in that manner. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. John. John Mr. Ryan. Ryan. John. Yeah. Um, we've been talking about the frames and so on. What about the glass itself? Is the glass tinted in any way or is it does it does the glass that's being proposed change um, the perception of these windows? Uh, go ahead, Jared. I was just going to say the, the existing glass is just a, a clear uh, look glass, and that was the intent to replace the outer panel and inner panel with with uh, with, with clear um, clear, clear okay. glazing. Okay. Okay. Oh. Go ahead, Kathleen. Sorry. No, no, no. I was just um, I'm, I've written down so I know you're you're writing down notes too. Is yeah. any <laughs> Uh, before we finalize, does anyone have any final comments? Uh, I have a final comment. I think, you know, the applicant has at least tried to um, uh, make an effort to keep the, the integrity of this building. Uh, and in fact, they did that with the lower level. And I see that they're, they're trying here at the upper level. And it always comes down to you know money and what you do and what you can actually fabricate what you make it out of and how you try to get close so i think uh they've made a good effort uh and i think that the the suggestions we've made should be achievable um and that's all i have to say okay thank you so we've closed discussion now and comments. Um, Graham, have you have you uh, got a um, a list of pro pro proposals that we? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just making some final notes on those. Um, okay. Um, 
And final notes that I have, I, I don't know how the commission wants to handle um, the restoration component. I, I heard some varying comments. Some commissioners felt that um, restoration should be the first evidence explored. Um, that's not part of what the applicant's uh, presentation was though. So I just wanted to get clarification on that uh, with respect to conditions. Then I have more clear conditions with respect to replacement. Um, the first would be that the applicant is to revise the plans to better depict the profile and dimensioning of the mullions and sash details, particularly with the center mullion uh, on the windows between the two window panes. Um, second is that the awning section of the uh, shall remain operable in the new uh, windows to match the existing. Um, and that the applicant is to return to the commission for a final review of all revised plans, finished details, and material selections. And also that the colors should should match uh, as close as possible to the metal to the uh, metal panels yeah. that flank the windows. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, can't we say um, that? Well, how does everyone else feel about restoring the windows? I get. Should we take a vote on that? And that would be the first um well, i guess that's everyone, you get to go through and solicit additional comments from each of the members to see what their thoughts are on the exploration of replacement okay um, so mr hyman do you want to so uh, i just have a procedural question on that in terms of the restoration is that encompassing uh utilization of the storm windows on the interior and if that is the case is that something that would even need to come before the commission again would it just be uh, an instruction to retain the existing windows and then they can i believe we, can add the we can't hear i can't hear it jason i can help clarify his comment mr hyman is saying that essentially if the applicant moves forward with just installation of a storm window on the interior of the existing windows, that would not require a C of A, and essentially they would be exempt from this process, and they would go and restore the windows and um, just install the interior storm. Um, that's what he's kind of commenting. Is that correct, Mr. Hyman? Yeah, that's correct. That's just I want to get an understanding. Is that what what's being proposed? Because there are a bunch of different you know options that were floated. You know, the storm windows, uh, uh, replacing them. Um, but making them operable. So I just want to be clear what we're being asked to vote on. Hmm. Well, uh, well, well, we'll continue through and, and hear what the other comments are, I guess. So, um, Ms. Kane Levy, you're next. Well, I was wondering if um, they could do a sample of a restored window with a storm window that could be reviewed by the re revisions committee and if it looks like it's something that is not feasible then we could proceed with the approval of the replacement well i get this so that's kind of the way that i my first comment that i had written was evaluate restoration and share the results with the hpc so i don't know what that evaluation consists of if we have them do a full mock-up i don't know what what the undertaking is on the applicant side, if that's even something that's cost effective or feasible for them to do, or um, what other evaluation techniques could be undertaken by the applicant to explore uh, this restoration work and then report some of those findings to the revisions committee, you know, to kind of provide some feedback as to whether it is possible or not. I guess that's the first kind of question that that I have. What does that process look like and how do we want to structure that if, if that is an imposed condition? I don't know if the applicant has any insight, you know, they've been on site and seen the windows, if there's any additional insight that they have about the existing window structure. Well, uh, well as, as Jared mentioned in the presentation, there's there's a, there's deterioration of this steel windows. So, I mean, just thinking out loud here, but I would think you'd have to, to really restore it. You'd want to s probably sand, blast the, the windows or something, you know, you'd change the glass, I guess, and then install a um a new storm system yeah but i have a comment for that if you do restore it and you put in storm windows because your steel windows are not thermally broken you're going to create condensation in between your storm window and your existing window which is going to create rust it ultimately you're going to have to be doing this every three to five years 
I, I have a comment. Um, are we commenting? Mm -hmm. um, John Remnitz. Uh, I, I don't see how this, I, you know, at first glance, the easiest thing to say is we're just going to leave them and put a storm window inside. I just don't, uh, I think that is just fraught with problems in terms of maintenance and what happened. They are not thermally broken. You are going to be trapping condensation in the inside. It's just not going to work. Um, and the only other thing you could do is maybe vent the inside storm window to get some air flowing through there. But then you reduce the energy efficiency of what you're trying to do in the first place. So um, just from an architect's point of view of trying to improve the energy efficiency of this building, uh, I don't see the storm window as a, uh, a real solution. I, I agree with your comment. This is, this is Jared. Can, can I just uh, propose something and it might be just out of turn or out of place, but could we, could we make a second attempt to, uh, to, to meet your, your comments that you've made about, you know, profiles and, and dimensions and, and basically, uh, create the same new window that really exactly matches what is currently there and then and then maybe move to if that's not acceptable to do the restoration would that be well my thought is and you know i don't want to speak for the full commission is if the consensus is we're uh generally um pleased with overall concept of replacing the windows, make them more energy efficient, and uh, the overall layout and preservation of, of the dimensions and the muttons is really just the details, then uh, my proposal would be just to approve the applica application with strict conditions that uh, they match the existing um, subject to, as what was discussed before, a um, field inspection by the revisions committee. And if it doesn't match, then you come back to the full board uh, with revised drawings and plans or, or whatever. But you know, I, I, again, I don't want to speak for, for the full board, but my opinion would be, and my uh, preference would be, is if we're generally okay and we know what direction we want them to take in order to maintain the current um, uh, the current design and to be as consistent with the original as possible, then why don't we just approve it and impose those conditions? Okay. With the, the audio is not good, Jason. We can't quite hear you, what you're saying. Uh, could you just, the last sentence was the, your last sentence. To approve. Oh, let me, let me uh, turn my mic up a little bit. I had it down because there's a feedback. Now we can't hear you. You can't hear me at all? Oh, now we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now it's louder. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you know, what I was saying and, and what I've heard from from the general comments is it seems like the commission is is pleased overall with the attempts to replicate the original. Uh, they're in favor of the overall objective of replacing the windows with something more energy efficient. So if the concern is the details and ensuring that it matches um, as closely as possible, then you know my my preference would be to approve it um, in condition that they uh, you know, and we can impose specific conditions on on how they need to match the original uh, and then make it subject to field inspection mm -hmm. by the revisions committee. And if it doesn't match, if there are issues, then they have to come back to the full board. Mm -hmm. But you know, I don't want to be in a position where they're coming back, you know, at least one, uh, maybe two times, then then field uh, field inspections. That's just, you know, that's what? kind of overkill. 
Why don't we make it that uh, they need to come to the revisions committee with a revised de drawing detail? I don't want them to have to mock something up completely until they show us what they think they can do. Yeah, and that was the first condition that I had written down was that the applicant is to prepare a revision plan set to depict the profile and dimensioning of the windows and sash details and mullion details, um, and then present that to the commission. So that would be exactly that, John. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I would vote for that. So to review those conditions again, that would be to um, do the, the, the revisions as just discussed. The second item would be that the awning section of the window would be operable in the new, in the new windows. Uh, to match the existing, um, the color of the proposed windows to match the existing, and that um, all file finishes, material selections, and detailing is to be reviewed by the commission. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that works for me. And uh, unless there are any other comments, I'm I'm ready to make a motion. Yeah. You can make a motion. Uh, I move to approve with the conditions as uh, Mr. Pedo stated. Second. Okay, and I'll call the roll. Mr. Reimnitz? Yes. Mr. Rooney? Yes. 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 <laughs> Mr. Yes. Greenbaum? Yes. Ms. Kane Levy? Yes. Uh, Mr. Hyman? Yes. And Ms. Bennett? Yes. Okay, the certificate is approved. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is an important building and I think it'll, it's, it'll be a great asset what you're doing. So look forward to seeing it and the revisions committee. And one other thing, um, in terms of the storefronts, I, I was hoping that we would also be able to look at the profiles and details of the storefronts. So maybe that's something that we could review at the same revisions committee meeting. If, if they've uh, been further developed. Uh, yes, we've been in touch with Graham and he um, said that we need to set up a meeting with the revisions committee for the storefront. So we were hoping to be able to do both at the same time. That would be yes. true. Yeah. Great. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you Thank all. You. Good luck Thank with you. the project. A lot of hard work. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for being a guinea pig in our remote meeting format. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then I think the next we just have to uh, adjourn, correct, Graham? That's that correct. Okay, so may I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion to adjourn. Motion. I second. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And our Aye. next Aye. meeting Aye. will be. Yes. We will. Thank you, Ira. <laughs> yeah. Our next meeting is uh, scheduled for when, Graham? It's scheduled for May. Oh, I don't have the date offhand. Um, hang on one second. Let me just pull this up. It's scheduled for Thursday, May 28th. May 28th. OK. Mm -hmm. Let's hope everybody <laughs> that we're all back. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody stay safe. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All. all right. Good night. Yeah, you did get my video, right? Yeah.